Do you need to add a menu to your game that also includes submenus? Well, keep watching and I'll show you how. G'day gamers. Let's have a look at the menu that we'll be creating for this tutorial. It's simply controlled with the arrow keys while enter or space will make a selection. Once you pick something, you can then be offered another menu with more menus easily added. Before I get started though, I also have a great game maker course over on Udemy, which shows how to make a complete platformer from start to finish. There's a coupon code in the description, which gives you up to 90% off the retail price. So check that out if it's something you're interested in. Now let's get started with the menu. So let's go to new and let's make a new game maker language project. Now I'm just going to call this menu and press enter. Now the first thing we want to do is create our object. So I'm going to go right click on objects, say create object, and I'm going to call it O underscore menu. Now for the room, I'm going to open that up and I'm just going to rename the room by clicking on it, pressing F2, and I'm going to call it R underscore menu. Now if we go into the room, I'm just going to resize the room. I'm going to make it instead of 1024, I'm just going to make it 800 wide and a 600 high, just to make it a little smaller. And I'm going to drag the menu object into the room. So let's go to our menu object and let's add a create event. So the create event will run when the object is created. Now the menu works via an array. So an array is just a variable that can store multiple values and you access the values in the array by an index. And the index is just a number that points to a position in the array. So let's add our array. I'm going to call this our main menu. Now I'm just going to call the array menu and we open a square bracket and we write a value and then close the square bracket. So we're now storing something in the position zero on the array. And we'll call this one start. Now I'm going to duplicate that. You can do that with control D and we'll do that twice. So we're going to have menu one and menu two. For number one, I'm just going to call options and then number two, we'll just have as exit. Now at the moment, this is just a one dimensional array. So I want to set that up first because that's the simplest menu you can create and then we'll change it a little to add the extra levels. So we need a way to know which menu item we're pointing at. I'm going to call that the index. So I'm going to set index to zero at the start. And basically this is our menu index position. So we know whereabouts we're pointing. Now I'm just going to create a step event. Now this step event will run every step of the game, which by default will be 60. The first thing we want to do is get the player's input. So when they're arrowing through the menu, we want to capture that. So I'm going to capture it into a local variable with the prefix VAR, and I'm going to call it up. But I'm going to put an underscore before it because I'm doing it as a local variable, and I like to use a, an underscore to indicate that. It turns yellow, indicating it is a local variable. So we can capture a key press by saying keyboard underscore check underscore pressed. And we want to capture the up key, so VK underscore up. And I'm going to duplicate that twice. And we're going to change one of them to be down. And we'll capture the down key the same way. And we also need a selection key. So I'm going to call this one select. And we can capture the enter key, but you might want to press space as well. So you can put an or here, take a copy of this, and we'll change this to space. So now how this works is when we are pressing the up key, the up variable is set to one. When we are not pressing it, it's set to zero. So we can use that information and I'm going to store that into a variable called underscore move. So if we write underscore down minus underscore up, then we can set the value of move when we are pressing one of these. So if up is being pressed, the value of move is going to be minus one because it's zero minus one. And then that'll allow us to move up in our menu. If down is being pressed and up is not being pressed, then down will have a value of one up will have a value of zero, so the move will equal one, and that'll enable us to move down in our menu. So let's use that to say that if our move variable 
is not equal to zero, which means we are pressing something, then we want to move the index. And we can do that just by saying index plus equals underscore move. So we're adding the value of move onto the value of index. And that'll move us either up or down in our array list. Now there's a problem with that in that we could reach the end of the array or we could reach the start of the array. And we don't want to go beyond those limits. So we need to clamp our values. Now in order to clamp the values, I'm going to first look at the size of the array. So let's make a variable called size. And we're going to look at the array length. And we just want the array length 1D at the moment because we're doing our one dimensional array. And the array is just called menu. So we're just storing the size of that array into that variable. But if we just look back at the array, our first item is zero and our last is two. So we can't go beyond those limits. So we need to ask this question and say, if our index is less than zero, well then our index is equal to the size minus one. And the reason it's minus one is because if our array just has one element, then the array size is one. Even though our index is zero, the array size is still one. So the array size is one more than the last index. So when we have three items, our array size is three, but our last element index is two. So the other thing that can happen is we go too far. We go further than two at the moment, but we can say else if our index is actually greater than or equal to our size, well, then we can just set it back to the start. So index equals zero. So basically we, this means we are at the start. So we just want to loop to the menu end. And this one is indicating that we are at the end. So we want to loop to the menu start. So that's all we need for our menu there. Now we need to actually draw our menu. So let's add a draw event. And we need to draw it so it loops through the array and it draws each item. So the first thing I want to do is center the text. So I'm going to say draw set horizontal align. And we're going to set it to FA underscore center. So that'll ensure our text is centered. Now let's create a font to draw it in. I'm going to right click on fonts, go to create font. And I'm just going to call this FNT underscore menu. Now your font selections will be different than mine. I'm actually going to go down all the way and choose Myriad Pro. And I'm going to set it to 26. You can choose whatever you like. I'm just going to close that down and we'll go back to our menu. Now we can set the font. So I'm going to say draw set underscore font and the font name, which is FNT menu. Now, because we're drawing multiple items of a menu, I want to control the gap that's between each item. I'm going to set the line spacing and just create a local variable called underscore gap and I'll set it to 40. Now we can draw the items. So now I want to create a loop and the loop will go through the array and it'll output each element. So if you press the F4 key, you can bring up some quick selections that GameMaker has. Number five is to add a for loop. Let's just click that. And now we need to loop through each element in the array. So we can look at our array length like we did before. And we need the length of menu. So the for loop will actually loop through the array and I will be the index while we're looping through. So we're going to draw the array. So we're going to say draw underscore text and we need a location. So we need an X and a Y position for to draw it. I'm just going to do it at room underscore width divided by two. And for the Y location, I'm going to set it to room underscore height, but this time I'm going to times it by 0.4 so that it's not quite in the middle. And then we're going to add the gap times I. What that means is this gap value will be applied when I increments. So I at the start is going to be zero. So the gap actually will be zero. But for the next element, I will be one. So the gap will be 40 and the next one will be 80 and so forth. So you can use that to ensure that we get an even amount of gap between them. Now we need to have our string, what we want to output. So we're going to output our menu and we're going to output the 
I element of the menu. Close our brackets. Now the only thing wrong with this is that all our elements will look exactly the same. So we need a way to know which element we're actually pointing at. So let's just go to the top here and firstly let's draw our color. So I'm going to say draw set color and just draw it in white. But now we need to look at our index variable. And if our index is actually the same value as i, well that means we're currently trying to display the value that our index is pointing at. So if i is equal to index, let's change the color because that's the one we're currently pointing at. So we'll say draw set color. And I'm just going to set it to C underscore teal. Now let's press play and see what that looks like. Now when we go up and down, the menu icon shows which one we're selecting and that looks great. Now currently when we press enter, nothing happens. So let's go set that up. So back in our step event, just down the bottom, we need a way to utilize our select. So if our select has been pressed, so if our select is one, now we could say if select is equal to true, but essentially this is the same as writing if select because if the variable is true, it's going to process the if statement anyway. So if select, we need a switch statement here and a switch statement lets us choose an option from a selection of options, but it only allows one choice. So we can say switch and we wanna look at where we're pointing. So where our index is pointing and based on where our index is pointing, we want something to happen. So we can say case zero and case zero will be our start because back here under the create, zero is our start, one is an option, two is an exit. And now if we duplicate these, I'm gonna select them all, press control D twice and we've got a case one, case two, this is our options and this is our exit. So under here, you can then write what you want for each one. So for example, in the start, we could say room, go to next. Now we don't have a next room, so let's just go over here and let's create another room. And we'll just call this R underscore game. And maybe in the background, we'll just change the color to blue so that we know that we're actually moved to another room. So just something like that. We have another selection here and that's for options. So we'll do that in a moment. And our exit, we can just say game underscore end. So now when we run, we should get a ability to press enter and a selection occur. So when we go to start, we get another screen and we move to the next room. So that works great. So now the big question is how do we add submenus? We wanna add something to the options so we can select something in there as well. So if we go back and look at our array, this is what's called a one dimensional array. It only holds one row of data. We can have something called a two dimensional array and that's where we add another element and essentially we then can store multiple rows and each of those rows will be a different menu. So let's make this a two dimensional array. I'm gonna hold down Alt and drag down and that'll let me type into multiple rows at once. So I'm gonna put zero comma. So I've now made this a two dimensional array. We have another value here. So essentially it's given it some height. So let's duplicate this. And this is going to be our sub menu one. Essentially this one is our sub menu zero. Now for the menu, I'm gonna just call it options. Now for our zero, I can hold down, alt, drag down, and then have one. So this is our next element in the two dimensional array. So for our options menu, this is where we're going to go. If we choose options, we can have a graphics, we can have say sound. Let's duplicate this and let's have a controls. We just gotta make sure these are right. So we have zero, one, two, and three. Now the word exit should be back. We want to move back if we're inside that menu and then back will take us back to the submenu before. So we need another variable here, and that variable is to know which submenu we're looking at. So let's call it sub underscore menu, and we'll set it to zero. So this is our current submenu. 
So we'll need to make a few changes because we have a two-dimensional array now. So in our step event, where we are getting the length of the array, this no longer works. We need to change this to 2D for a two-dimensional array. And we need to add which particular index we want to get the length of. Well, we want to get the length of whatever our submenu is pointing to at the moment. So our submenu variable will point to which submenu, which one of these we're pointing to. So that will get the correct length. And then for our output, we actually need to do the same thing here. We want to get the length of the submenu. And just for the output down here, we need to ensure that we're looking at the submenu and we want the I index for the submenu. Now there's no reason to test it now because we still aren't doing anything with our selections. We need to change here what happens when we select something. So let's just make this larger so we can look at it better. Now at the moment when we come in here, we're just looking at our index, but that's not enough. We also need to look at which submenu we're currently pointing at, whether it's submenu zero or submenu one. So we need another switch statement here. So let's say switch submenu, we'll open brackets and close our brackets. Now we can indent this and we'll do it twice because we need a case statement here that points to our zero case and our zero case is going to be our main menu and then down here it's going to be our break. So when our submenu is zero we'll come in here and then we'll be able to choose one of these based on our index. If our submenu is one well then we're in the options menu so we need to have another case statement for the options. So let's duplicate that. And this time our case is going to be one and this is for the options. So what do we write here? Well, if we go back and look, our options are graphics, sound controls and back. So they are going to be our cases. So we have graphics. We won't need this. Uh, we have our sound. So these comments will just help to give you a better idea when you're building your menu and when you want to go back and look at it. It's a really good idea to write the comments with the double forward slashes. This is controls. And the last one, if we just duplicate this, change it to case three, and this is our back. But now we need something to happen when these things are selected. So for options, if we choose the option, well then what we're doing is we're changing our submenu from zero to one, because then it'll open this. So let's do that. Let's set our submenu to equal one. And at the same time, let's set our index to equal zero. And that means that when we go to the submenu, we'll go to the first entry in that menu. So similar to that, if we go down and look at our back, if we choose back, well then we want to come out of this submenu and go back to the one above. So we're going to set our sub menu to zero. But this time we're going to set our index not to zero because if you go back, we don't want to go back to start. We actually want to go back to options because that's the menu that we were in. So let's set our index to one. Now for graphics and sound and controls, I'm not going to do anything just right now on this. Let's test this out though. Press play. And now we can go up and down. We can select options with enter or space and we go to another menu. Now at the moment, these all don't do anything, but if we press back, we go back and we're still highlighting options, which is what you want. But that's how you do menus with submenus. Now, before I go, I just wanted to show you some of the things that you can do. You'll notice some additions here that enable some smooth scrolling to a larger scaled version of the text. Also, once we get down to the menus, when you're trying to make a selection, your choices actually change the text. So you can change individual text, or you can actually have one text changing another one as well. But these are just small additions. If there's enough interest, I'll make another tutorial showing how to do those kind of changes. So that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you in the next one.